Welcome back to Carver Arena. Mitch Robinson coming up the championship game of the Class A. Waterloo Javot against Rock Falls. The challenge for Rock Falls in this one, stop the man with a mission, John Thomas. The man on the inside has been on fire in the tournament, coming off a 30-point, 16-rebound game in the semifinal against Quincy Notre Dame. Thomas is the man. Now for Rock Falls, they can hit the three-pointers. Brian Vance, Jedediah Johnson uh, was the man earlier today. Both of them coming in with over 20 points on the three-pointer. That's the matchup. Stay with us. It's coming up. But first, Yvonne Simmons with the Class A All-State team. We're between games at Carver Arena, and one of the festivities that happens was the announcement of the Illinois Basketball Coaches Association Class A first team. Those are Laban Cross, a senior out of McLeansboro, Max Galt, 6'2", senior from Gall Gallatin County, Kyle Wentz, 6'4", senior from Effington St. Anthony. Then we have Brian Pasecki. He was from Nashville. They fell to Breeze Central at home. They were the number one rated team. Then there is Brian Vance. You'll see him in the championships from Rock Falls, averaging 18 points in the three-point threat. Then there was Clint Kluffel. He averaged 24 points in the tournament. They fell to Quincy in the quarters. He's out of Riverton. Seth Nelson, 6'1", senior from Farmington. Les Norman, 6'0", senior from Lebanon. Jonathan Schneiderman, six-foot senior from Forreston, and then Brad Korm, a fourth-place winner, averaging 24 points in the tournament, headed to Southern, was a 6'9 senior from Plano. Those are your winners for the Class A State All Team. We'll be back with the championship game. The Rockets of Rock Falls shot their way into the Class A Championship with their top two scorers, Jedediah Jaya Johnson and Brian Vance, leading the way with three-point shots. Vance, the third leading scorer in the tournament. But Rock Falls has to counter Waterloo Jabot's John Thomas, who's been virtually unstoppable in the tournament. The Class A title game is coming up next. Welcome back to Carver Arena, Peoria, Illinois. It's the 1999 Class A Championship game. Tonight, the Rockets of Rock Falls meet the Hawks of Waterloo Jabot. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Bennett with David Kaplan. Well, two teams are left battling for the title in Class A. And Cap, two kind of contrasting styles, as we saw there. This is a Rock Falls team, which can shoot the three, but they've got to deal with John Thomas. Let's talk about the three-point shooters for Rock Falls. Well, Rock Falls has a multi-pronged attack, but they've got two guys that can knock it in from downtown. Brian Vance, as you see right there, draining a long tray. Jedediah Johnson, also a guy that can make shots in a big way, as you see right there along the baseline. They win through their three-point shooting, but tonight they're going to have to get their shots within the flow of the offense. They can't panic if Thomas gets it stuck on automatic. Both had big games earlier today in their semifinal victory. Now, what about John Thomas of Waterloo Jabot? He is shooting close to 80% from the floor in the tournament, 79% hitting 11 of 13, 13 of 16. He's been a hard man to stop. Well, you and I watched yesterday before they played. I watched him warm up, and I said to you, I like the way this guy carries himself. Great players have a charisma, a way that they play. He doesn't talk to the refs. He plays hard. He moves without the ball. He defends. He rebounds. He scores. If he doesn't have a good look, he passes it back out. That's why he shoots 76% in the tournament. He takes good shots. This kid is a Division I player, a big-time talent, and a wonderful young man. I think he's going to have a huge game tonight. Well, we'll see what John Thomas does. Let's go right now to the third member of our crew, Mitch Robinson. Thanks a lot, Dave Squared. And then this one, it's an interesting matchup, as you say. You know, in Waterloo, Jabot, no one expected them to be here. In Rock Falls, you have a community that's never won a state title in anything. Last time they were down here, 1958. So, should be exciting. Back to you two, Dave. Certainly should be. There you see John Thomas getting set to lead his Waterloo Jabot Hawks into the championship game. They are 28 and six. They have won eight in a row. And earlier today, they defeated Quincy Notre Dame in the semifinals, 65-37. There is what they're playing for, the Class A championship trophy.
All right, welcome back to Carver Arena. Mitch Robinson here with Coach Tom Siegel. And Coach, uh, guys have never been down there before. What did you talk about them tonight coming back strong? Well, I think it's just uh, really focused on playing basketball. You know, I think that uh, motivation should be there and all the things that we've tried to work on all year that, to execute and go out and do that tonight. All right, good luck. We'll talk to you at the half. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's time for the Class A Championship. Let's go to the public address announcer, Paul Herzog, for the introduction. Original March Madness for tonight's Class A Championship game in Carver Arena, featuring the Rock Falls Rockets, a record of 30 and 3. And the Hawks of Jabot, a record of 28 and 6. Let's meet the starting lineups. At a forward for Rock Falls, a 6'2 senior, number 23, Jedediah Johnson. At a forward for Jabot, a 6'4 junior, number 30, Josh Meath. The other Rockets forward, a 6'5 senior, number 40, Herb Martin. The other forward for the Hawks is 6'7", senior number 42, Jeremy Nagel. The Rock Falls Center, a 6'6", sophomore, 33, Brian Borjan. The Jabot Center, a 6'6", senior, 44, John Thomas. And a guard for the Rockets, a 5'9 sophomore, number 11, Jorge Acosta. And a guard for the Hawks, a 6-foot sophomore, number 10, John Bookmiller. And a guard for Rock Falls, a 5'11 senior, number 3, Brian Vance. The other guard for Jabot, a 6'2 senior, number 22, John Tariski. Head coach at Rock Falls for four seasons, a record there of 76 and 41. There is Tom Sigel, the head coach at Rock Falls, 76 and 41 in his fourth year and a 53 and 11 record over the last two seasons. And for Waterloo, Jabot, Dennis Reeder, 19 years, 382 victories with the Hawks, 11, 20 victory seasons, and here they are in the championship game. Our officials for this game tonight, from Ottawa, Larry Bruck, from Ottawa, Gene Duffy, and from Stillman Valley, Jerry Whitney. It's quite an honor for those fellows as well to be officiating in the championship game. And this is what a state championship game is all about because geographically these two schools are about as far apart as you can be and still be in the state of Illinois. You've got Waterloo Jabot from the south end of the state and Rock Falls from the upper northwest corner. Let's look at how these teams got here. Waterloo Jabot defeated Decoy and then Chesser Johnston City. A U high yesterday, then Quincy Notre Dame earlier today in lopsided fashion, 65-37 and Rock Falls getting here to this championship game in Peoria with wins over Fulton, Galena, Farmington in the super sectional, Providence St. Mel in a great ball game last night, and then Plano earlier today. You can feel the electricity in here. Everybody excited. Tom's, think of the number of people that are watching right now that aren't in this building from those two communities with bragging rights on the line for a state championship. How many people are left in those two communities? Not would too be many. My question. Not too many. A lot of them are here in Carver Arena tonight. A capacity crowd on hand. And it'll be Martin jumping against Thomas. Top control to Rock Falls in the green. And this is Jedediah Johnson. Has his shot rejected by Thomas into the arms of John Book Miller. Well, he makes himself a presence immediately. We'll see how physical Rock Falls gets inside. That's what their plan is, to try and bump John Thomas out of his comfort zone. Thomas outside right now. John Tariski got it to Thomas. Back up for Miller. A three is good. Well, 
double, triple the post, trap the post, whatever you want to call it. Thomas does a very good job at fanning the ball back out. He got Book Miller a clean look. Costa outside to Johnson. Guarded by Meath. Here's Brian Vance, first team, Illinois Basketball Coaches Association, all-state performer. And his teammate, Johnson, with the ball right now, special mention for the coaches. 21 earlier today, Johnson did. Now it's back out to Vance. Long three, around and off, and Nagel clears. Okay, that was a bomb. That was from way downtown. He has hit some big shots for Rock Balls. Earlier today, in fact, they got it to Nagel. And Nagel fouled by Vance. Now watch the weak side help come over. Here comes the entry pass into the low block. Now help's got to come. And Vance a little bit late. You've got to be quicker and react. You've got to see that. You have to be able to play what's called Ball, you man. You've got to see your man, and if you're coming from the weak side, you've got to be there quicker. Rotate, get in there, either steal the pass, knock it away, but when you come from behind and hack, you're going to get nailed every time. Earlier today, Waterloo Jabot shot just 50% from the line, 8 of 16 in the semifinal victory. Nagel makes one of two. It's 4 0 Jabot. Costa. The first foul on Jabot. Hold on. John Buckmiller. So Rock Falls will take it out of bounds. There's Vance. He can hit from there. Johnson. Nearly carried it. Costa wheels, leans in, didn't go. Thomas got his hands on it. Tariski comes away with it. In a hurry, Tariski pulls up. A little too strong, and Herb Martin, the leading rebounder 13 times for Rock Falls, clears for the Rockets. Jedediah Johnson pulls up at the top of the three-point line. He wants a shot. There it is. And Thomas the rebound. But Thomas does such a good job. He's not 6'9", he's 6'6", but he taps the ball to himself. And he comes up with it. They go back out. Book Miller got it again. Check that. Me with the three. But they, that's the second triple they've gotten by going through the post. Everyone thinks three winners mean you're a perimeter team. They went inside, kicked back out, and got their look. Their offense operates. Inside out. Nice little jump hook by Brian Bourjan to put Rock Falls on the board. Just a sophomore. Great experience for him for the next two seasons to play here in Peoria. One of two sophomores on the Rock Falls squad to go along with six seed. Risky knocking down the jump shot on the wing. Here's Brian Vance. 9 to 2, Jabot. Brian Bourgeois, a double double last night against St. Mel in the quarterfinals. Johnson got it to Vance, and then Meath called for the foul. Meath a little bit late. You when you play defense, you've got to have eyes in the sides of your head, in the back of your head. You've got to do a better job. Where's the ball? i got to know where the ball is and how it relates to you. 4-10 to go, first quarter of this Class A championship game. The Hawks of Waterloo Jabot out to a 9-2 lead on Rock Falls. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to Carver Arena, Mitch Robinson. Hey, besides the great basketball also going on down here, the March Madness Experience. And next week, we'll have a special on that half-hour show on the March Madness, March Madness Experience. Plenty of things to do, and you can pick up a nice ball like the one that Dave Kaplan's holding with those pretty manicured fingers. Cappy, back to you. <laughs> Cap, any response? They are, they are nicely done. Thank you. Inbounds play, Rock Falls. <laughs> to keep my hand clean. Better than I was holding a soccer ball. Easy. Just not a soccer fan. Waterloo Javo. And our producing Rating director was a great soccer player. Here's the field goal shooting 20% thus far by Rock Falls, 60% by Jubo. Johnson will put it up. And Johnson with the second basket for Rock Falls. It's 9 to 4. Jabo shoots 53% from the floor. Of course, much of that because of that man, Dobson Thomas, who got the high low pass into Dan Hymos. Hymos. He, he's just a sophomore, six foot nine and a half, six ten. Number 50 Hymos who checked in on the timeout. Three on the way. Not this time. And Martin got the rebound. Lead pass all the way in. Vance slays it in. Real nice job by Vance because here came Hymos. Good hustle out of the sophomore. Looking for a shot block. Coach Reeder, Dennis Reeder up, says we have to rotate. Someone has to take responsibility on an outlet pass. Nobody communicated there. Four straight points for Rock Falls to cut this lead to three. The high load of Thomas. Thomas, and he was fouled. Count the basket for John Thomas. See, the first three or four or five possessions, they've bottled him up, but he never quits working. He wears out anybody you throw on him defensively. Great catch in traffic. There's four green shirts in the picture. Nobody could stop him. Now look at the entry. Great catch. And get it right up on the glass. They called Bourjan for the foul. He had 30 this morning. And I'm telling you what, they didn't look for him enough. If he would have had them really focused on him, he'd have 50. And Waterloo comes away with it. Out it goes, Book Miller for three. No. Ball knocked out of bounds to Rock Falls. Thomas, 13 of 16 shooting this morning in the game against Quincy Notre Dame. 275 field goals on this season. Costa bounces to Vance. Vance leans in, fires, got a tough shot by Vance. Not just a three-point shooter. Well, he shows you can take the ball to the rack. 25 against Farmington in the super sectional as they avenged last year's super sectional loss to the Farmers. A loss which spurred this Rock Falls team to get to Peoria. A little look at Tariski there. John Thomas, family of all boys, lost his mother at a very young age. And it's been his dad and he, and I believe there's a, four boys in the family. They say he's just a wonderful young man. We heard from his dad a little bit earlier. Javon asked him where, where John got the height. Book Miller for three. Weak side rebound to Risky up top, Meath. Twelve eight in favor of Jabal Thomas. They get the open look, the fake, and the scoop, no good, by Tariski. Out of the Vance. Tell you what, Rock Falls, you've got to give them credit. They've really done a nice job here early defensively on Thomas, doubling and tripling the post. Rebound, knocked out of bounds to Waterloo Juvo. Acosta could not get it to fall. They've done a very good job at running guards down at John Thomas. So when that ball comes in, they're playing behind him on the low block, which is dangerous with a score. But when you bring an extra body, it certainly makes it tough on him. From the high post, high most. What, 6'10", a sophomore, and he trains a 16-footer. 14-8, Waterloo Jabot. There's 
Johnson. Johnson it down low for Jean. And they got Hymos under the basket. First foul on Hymos, third team foul. Checking in for Waterloo Jabot is Chad Friedrich, six foot junior, and Jeremy Nagel returning as well, the six seven senior. There's Jeremy. John Thomas comes out, he'll sit right next to Coach Reeder. Martin muscles it up. Real nice cut. Caught the ball on the low block and got it right up on the glass, but the best part of the whole deal is there he comes right now. Let's get right to the basket. He knows he's got the corner turn. No one is in front of him. Any contact he gets, he knows he's at least going to the line. You get a couple of looks at it. Real nice catch and score. First foul on Jeremy Nagel, who fouled out of the ball game yesterday against U High. Free throw good as Martin completes the three point play. And it's a three point game. 14 11 here, the final minute of the first quarter of this championship game. Meath. Verdict. Got it down low and a decisive block of Nagel's shot. Swatted back over his head. Great block. Got to give a head and shoulder fake when you're on the low block. And then power it up and go through the man. The Rock Falls faithful loved it. They are on their feet. Rock Falls. Jedediah Johnson looks back at Coach Tom Sigel and now gives it to Acosta as the final seconds wind down here in this first quarter. Ten seconds, he'll start to go. Acosta to the right side, nearly lost it. Great Bounce pass. It. cutting to the basket. Real nice job to find the open man. And it's a one-point game after one quarter. Jabot, the quick start, but Rock Falls ends the first quarter with a flurry. Here it is, Acosta to Bourjan. 14-13 after one. Welcome back to Carver Arena, getting ready for the second quarter, 14-13. Jabot in front. I'm with former Peoria Mayor Jim Malouk, the man responsible for bringing this tournament down here to Peoria. And obviously, you knew this was going to be a success when you go on to get it here. Well, we worked hard for it, and uh, it wasn't just my show. It was a couple of guys named uh, Steve Corey and Greg Edwards. but And also, boy, March Madness is really playing great here in Peoria. Some 1,500 volunteers are in the background making this thing work, and uh, it's going to be pretty darn hard for any other city to get it back. Well, definitely a pat on the back for you. You've done a wonderful job, Jim. Great to talk to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the coverage. My pleasure. Dave and Dave, back to you. All right. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Second quarter underway, 14-13 Waterloo Jabot. But Rock Falls on a 7-2 run to end the first quarter and climbed to within one after spotting Jabot the early 9-2 lead. Thomas catches in the low block, comes out with it. High lob to Meath, all the way across. And now to Risky. Brooke Miller, he finds Thomas, back up. And all the way down the lane, in and out. Heimos right there for the putback. Well, real good job to crash the offensive glass twice. They got touches for John Thomas, but three green shirts prevented a shot. That's his patience level. He's very good at not forcing the action and finding guys back on the perimeter. Heimos now with four. 16-13, Waterloo Jabot. Johnson. To Vance. With Tariski on him. Vance throws it up there. Rebound chased down on the floor by Bojan. Bojan tried to reverse it back up. Bounced it along the baseline. Martin. And a foul on Thomas. Well, that's not great defense by Waterloo Jabot. You, you have to do a better job denying that pass along the baseline when you've got a guy trapped. There's that baseline pass, two white shirts, and nobody steps down and looks. That's the only available option other than the throwing the ball away. You have to get down and shut down that baseline. Martin has attempted at Rock Falls only free throws of this game. One for two as Nagel returns, replacing Hymos. Martin, a 44% 
free throw shooter of the season, as you saw there, and he makes the second. Martin now with four. It's a two point Jabot lead, 16 to 14. Coach Miller finds Thomas. He'll put it up. You single coverage. If he's in single, you've got to go to him every single time. He needs to touch the ball every offensive possession, but there nobody came over and doubled. If something's working, don't go away from it. What a great touch he has. Tremendous. High low pass to Martin. He caught it and scores. Nice entry pass. Real tough catch. Tariski walks it up as we approach the six minute mark of the second quarter of play. And Meath zigged rather than zag, and the ball thrown away. Jabot turns it over. And the Rockets bring the ball up. Down by two at the six minute mark. Jorge Acosta, 152 assists on the year. I suspect many of them to that man. And there's Martin cutting down the lane. A little too strong, weak side rebound. Meath. Head to Book Miller. A risky back to Book Miller. Waterloo Javel shoots 36% from beyond the arc. They find Thomas. It's slotted away by Martin. Out of bounds. We have seen some. Decisive blocks. Well, take a look. This is how you play post defense when you got a great score. Look at that. That's tremendous. That is how you double the post. You keep John Thomas from getting an opportunity to score. But now, when you got it single coverage, everybody's lazy there. You've got to do a better job and find him and double it all the time. Thomas just missed the shot. Martin pulled down the rebound. Rock Falls brings it up, trailing by two points. It's 14-13 at the quarter. It's 18-16 right now. Chabot still with the lead. And there's a steal if Tariski can catch up with it, and he does. Imos missed it, and then Thomas knocked it out of his arms. Risky missed, I think it was Hymos on the fast break, had him wide open. Lucky he didn't charge. A three on the way by Tariski. Off the mark. Johnson, the rebound. That's a big foul. That's two on John Thomas. Here comes the dribble penetration. Turns the corner. Now here comes Thomas over to try and defend. And there's your foul call. Sends Acosta to the line. He's a 57% free throw shooter. This is the first one. The Chicago Sun Times is the official newspaper of the IHSA state championships. Remember to pick up your Chicago Sun Times for complete coverage of Illinois high school sports. Costa missed them both. Thomas goes high to get the rebound. Thomas has to play very smart now. As aggressive as he is on the block, he's got to be very careful he doesn't pick up an offensive foul or he'll spend the rest of the half on the bench and the rest of the game saddled in foul trouble. Midway point, second quarter, 18-16. Thomas has it against Bourjon, swatted away from behind by Martin, right to Buck Miller. Well, again, two green shirts. That's at least three blocks for Martin. In fact, he had two in the first quarter. Three and a half to go. Buck Miller against Acosta. Skip pass to me. They get the open shot. Ray Thomas makes the over the shoulder catch, put it up. He was fouled. He, John Thomas does a good job catching the ball. That's a very tough angle to pass into. You need to take a dribble and take it down and make your entry pass because you force him to catch it with momentum going toward the baseline. 
dribble the ball down below the free throw line extended, then dump it inside, and Thomas needs to give a good head and shoulder fake, then take it up hard to the, to the glass. I think Martin was a little surprised at the call. A little Great bit. Throw, no good. By Thomas checking in is Tariski. And Sean Hardy has checked in there. You see Ferdick head to the bench. And number 44, Sean Hardy, 6'4", junior for Rock Falls. Heard Martin not happy. Tell the coach Tom Siegel, he says, I didn't touch you. Six for John Thomas now, and a three-point Jabot lead. As you look at the blocked shot, Thomas going up, 19-16 Jabot. Great block. For the most complete coverage of IHSA sports action, tune in every week to IHSA Sportsnet. The incomparable Tom Waddle brings you all the highlights and recaps of the week's biggest games. IHSA Sportsnet, the official weekly highlight show of the IHSA, can be seen this Sunday at 11 a.m. Who's Tom Waddle? <laughs> Never heard of Tom Waddle. There's the field goal shooting in the second quarter. Rock falls 33%. Jabot well below that. The three on the way by Johnson. Off the front of the rim, tapped in the air by Acosta. And Acosta hits the floor hard. The floor must be padded because these guys are just. Seen guys. I haven't seen guys hit the floor that hard and just bounce right back up. I'd be on the disabled list for a month. Boom! Thomas. Thomas. What a tough Thomas. shot by Thomas. That's the way we saw John Thomas play yesterday and earlier today. He doesn't lower his shoulder. He doesn't get himself in that offensive foul situation. He just protects the ball and uses the window. 21-16, Jabot. Adiah Johnson spins in the lane. Nowhere to go with it. Out to Vance for three. Bounces high off the rim. Thomas in traffic, the rebound. But Vance has a pretty good jump shot. He doesn't hit every one, but boy, his form is good. Vance, four of seven from three-point range earlier today. Out to me. Got around Johnson all the way in. Too strong. Out of bounds. Rock Falls ball. 157 to go. There's Dennis Reeder, the coach of Waterloo Jabot. There's Jeremy Nagel returning. Jeremy Nagel has gone to the IHSA state finals in three sports, golf, baseball, and basketball. That's an accomplished athlete. I need some golf lessons. Maybe he can help me. Yet, somehow, you don't get the sense he's blasé about this, even though he's been through it before in different sports. How could you be? There's Nagel. And a hard collision, and the blocking foul call for the bump. All right, now let's watch the pass because real good job to look down the floor. Always look and see who's open. And there's your contact. First foul on Jorge Acosta right here. Angle at the line. The third leading scorer for Waterloo Jabot, average. About nine points a game. I mean, he's a big guy for a golf. 6'7, 220. I have a feeling he probably hit the ball away. I was going to say, he must hit the ball 300 yards off the tee. So, what you're saying is he still couldn't outdrive you. That's exactly right. <laughs> Bounce to Johnson. Only he's in the fairway and I'm two fairways over. Well, that's beside the point. Vance. Wheels. Fires. Got it. Nice Shot job. By Vance. On the move, hang in the yes. air, and drills it. Rock falls within three with just about one minute to go until halftime. And this Class A championship game. Risky. Oh. He had it blocked. Bodies flying, Nagel the putback. I really like what they've done here, Waterloo Jabot, to take Thomas out of the game, and Nagel steps up. Blocked by Haimo, 
Dennis, a foul call, and stepping to the line will be Sean Hardy. I'll tell you, Dennis Reeder just fit to be tied. A lot of contact inside. I think they'll get him with the body. Well, they called the foul on Nagel, 17 fouls. Two shots here. And Rock falls in the bonus for the final half minute of the half. There was the play by Vance. Nice spin on the move. Nails it. I probably would take Nagel out of the game as well here. With just 30 seconds left. Got to make sure your other big guy does not pick up his third foul. Two on him right now. Four point lead for Waterloo Jabot. Hawks with the basketball. Tariski watching the seconds wind down. And in about two seconds, he'll start to go. There he goes. Neath to Buck Miller. Shakes free in the lane. The right hand. No. Hardy the rebound. First half has come to an end. 16 minutes in the book in this Class A championship game. And Waterloo Jabot takes a four point lead to the locker room of the Rockets of Rock Falls. Let's go to Mitch Robinson. Thanks, Dave. Coach Siegel, uh, I like what you're doing on the defense. Uh, Herb Martin came out strong, and you're really keeping uh, uh, their, their postmen out of the blocks. Well, I think that that's been the key. I know they hit a couple of threes early, and one of them where we left uh, uh, number 10, Buck Miller, and that's something we talked about we couldn't do. We did it right off the bat, but since then we found him a little more in the perimeter. I think that we, that we need to do a little more passing screen and a little less dribbling on the offensive end. All right. You're right in this one. Have a good second half. Thank you. Good. Thanks for staying with us. Dave, back to you. All right, Mitch. Thank you. Halftime. Waterloo Jabot leading Rock Falls 23-19. We'll be right back with our halftime activities from Carver Arena. Welcome back to Carver Arena. We're at halftime of the Class A championship game. In this one, it is Jabot leading. 23 to 19 over Rock Falls, and during the halftime right now, the fourth and third place teams from the consolation game getting their trophy and awards, and that was Plano taking fourth, Quincy Notre Dame winning third place game. Joining me now for halftime, Dr. B.J. Wolf, the superintendent of schools at Rock Falls, and uh, this, is, this is a big deal for you guys, Danner, because no state titles in your school history yet. Uh, great athletic tradition at Rock Falls High School, no state titles, you're right. 1958, of course, was our last trip down here uh, for the big dance, and we play second. And, of course, we have high hopes. Uh, the halftime score indicates that uh, I think we can get the job done. It's, it's, this really shows that people may not realize that it's a lot tougher, a lot more elusive getting down to this final game. You could have a great season, but you get into those playoffs, and it's a whole different season. Absolutely. Starting almost two weeks ago, we had a single elimination uh, tournament. And uh, anytime that happens, you can't have a bad night. You can't run into the other team having an excellent night. Uh, you just have to hope that everybody plays their game, and that game gets you down to state. What's on tap for Rock Falls? Uh, where's your athletic department and, and your high school sports heading? Well, again, we've, we've not had any uh, major uh, uh, team championships in the history of the school. Uh, Rich Montgomery's wrestling program has produced a lot of first place uh, individuals. Uh, but uh, starting four years ago, uh, with the arrival of Coach Siegel, uh, we uh, decided that we were going to give athletics every chance to excel that the kids could sustain. And in order to do that, you have to uh, have people that are interested in change, and certainly Coach Siegel is. You have to create an environment where change is welcome. And then you have to do everything that you can to culture that change. And of course, the basketball program has come along tremendously. Uh, it seems to underscore the, or at least underplay the importance of a uh, whole bunch of really good basketball players. Uh, but that's necessary too. Right behind us, they're getting their awards. Uh, how proud are you going to be watching your guys, regardless, they get a first or second place award and you're putting some hardware in your trophy case? No, absolutely, Mitch. In fact, if they had been there or if we hadn't have made it to uh, the Saturday games, well, we'd be just as proud of them. They're an excellent bunch of kids, nice bunch of kids. Uh, they like their game, and uh, I think that even the casual observer notices that they have fun playing it. Is the whole town here? That's, uh, that's one of the things that this has done for us. Uh, uh, the season is always fun, but coming this far has had an unbelievable influence on the student body. Uh, the town, uh, I think half the town is here, and the other half couldn't get tickets. So uh, uh, they're really behind us. Well, we know they're watching then.
Good luck in the second half. Thanks for stopping by, Thanks, Dr. Wolf. All right, when we come back, first half highlights with Dave and Dave. Stay with us right here on Fox Sports Chicago. We're at halftime here at Carver Arena in Peoria. The Waterloo Jabot Hawks leading the Rock Falls Rockets 23-19 after 16 minutes of this State of Illinois Class A championship game. I'm Dave Bennett with David Kaplan. We talked at the beginning, Cap, about the three-point shooting by Vance and Johnson. They had nine three-point field goals in the semifinals earlier today, nine of 15. Uh, neither has hit a three-pointer yet. And John Thomas has already missed as many field goals as he missed the entire semifinal game. Well, they've bottled him up. They've done a great job defensively. Let's take a look. They pitch a tent, green shirts all around. But he gets help. Dan Hymos, the sophomore, inside with a stick back. John Thomas, though, this is the stallion they've got to ride. But no double here. So he gets a clean look, soft touch, drills it. But let's watch some more great defense. Here comes Herb Martin. Get that out of here. And then Brian Vance, a spinning, whirling move into the lane, hang and score for Rock Falls. Good first half action. And one of the young fans here at Carver Arena watching as Jabot leads Rock Falls 23-19. Wave to everybody. We're at halftime. The state of Illinois, the home of America's original March Madness. We are halfway home in this Class A championship game. Waterloo Jabot leading Rock Falls 23-19. Let's check the first half statistics in this game. Rock Falls shot 42% in the opening half despite being outscored. Jabot shooting 36%. Three-point shooting, Rock Falls 0 for 4. That's Vance and Johnson each 0 for 2. Jabot at 33%, free throws, both teams at 43%. There you see the rebounding and the four blocks by Rock Falls as we turn things over to Mitch Robinson. Thanks a lot, David. David here with Coach Reeder. And Coach, uh, you got to be happy. You got the lead at the half. What you talk to him about improving on in the second half? Well, we made a couple defensive mistakes where we gave him a couple baskets. But other than that, we did a really good job defensively. Uh, offensively, we're a little stagnant, but they're doing a good job defensively. We we're pretty pleased with the way we played, and we basically knew it's, you know, it's championship game. It's played pretty close to the vest, and you'd anticipate that. You know, watching you and Coach Siegel before the game, it looks like you guys have an admiration and a lot of respect for each other. I think we're both having a lot of fun here. He seems like a really, really good guy, and, and uh, you know, again, I, I think we're both just enjoying the experience. All right, good luck in the second half. We'll talk to you after the game. Thank you. Thank you. Dave, Dave, back to you. All right, Mitch, thank you. Second half coming up. 23-19, Jabot leads Rock Falls. We're getting set for the third quarter. Jabot leading 23-19 at halftime of this Class A title game. Leading scorers in the ball game through the opening 16 minutes. Martin and Vance each with six points for Rock Falls. John Thomas, eight. And Dan Hymos with four. For Jubal. Brian Vance, the all state performer. But in the first half, Dave, 0 of 2 from beyond the arc, he has got to knock down a couple of triples here in the second half if Rock Falls wants to be hoisting first place hardware. 3 of 6, he needs more shot opportunities, and he also has to hit a couple beyond the arc. He's a very solid player. He's worked hard defensively. He's had to double the post at times. He's passed the ball well. But now he's got to say, you know what, the next 16 minutes, I've got to do some scoring. I've got to open things up inside by really penetrating, kicking. And when I get my shot, i got to hit it. Carver Arena, Peoria, Illinois, a jam-packed crowd here watching this Class A title game. David Kaplan and Mitch Robinson. I'm Dave Ennett. Glad to be bringing you Illinois high school sports history here tonight. Who will succeed? Nauvoo Calusa as the state Class A champion. Will it be that Waterloo Jabot Hawk, John Thomas, and his teammates? We'll see. Third quarter underway. This is Jorge Acosta. Lost the handle on it, got it back. And right there is Bourgeois. Real good job to stay with it. The ball was up in the air, 
Everybody watched it, and Borjan grabbed it and put it home. It's a two-point game. There's Thomas. Finds Nagel cutting down the lane. And Thomas. Nagel was a little bit late. He needed to catch the ball and go right up. It was an excellent pass out of a double team by John. That was a great pass. Now take it right up. But he waits, waits, and he gives Martin a chance to recover. But Thomas, Johnny on the spot for the stick. Five blocks now for her Martin. And it's not as though he's a seven-footer in there. He no. just works very hard defensively. He goes six five. There's Vance. Driving on Tereski, now takes the jumper. Backed up once, twice, loose on the floor. Bourjan feeds Vance again. Still can't get it to fall. And Thomas pulls it down. Diagonal pass, spotting up the three by Book Millers off the mark. Nagel the rebound. And Meath, he drains it. Nice job to kick the ball back up top. Nagel had himself an opportunity that would have been contested. He saw a wide open shooter and Meath nailed it. Now it's a seven point Waterloo Jabot lead. Book Miller is one for six shooting in the game. And hit his first shot. Hit his first. Martin comes off the rim to a pasta. Foul called on Book Miller. Well, there's the jump shot. Missed badly. But John Buckmiller doesn't do a very good job there at checking out Jorge Acosta, and it gets him to the free throw line. Acosta 0 for 2 in the first half from the line. Swishes that one home. And brings Rock Falls within six. You can just sense the tension as you look at that Rock Falls bench. This one short, Nagel pulls it down. And you got Thomas in single coverage here. You need to get the ball right into him. And it goes into him. Wheels. And it was contested. Rojan got a hand up there and knocked it down. Well, Waterloo was late getting the ball. They didn't recognize the opportunity on a single on the block. And there's a triple. And the first one for Jedediah Johnson. Five for Johnson, 28-25, Jabot. Dennis Reeder just got up and said, get the ball inside. But Nagel hits from outside. Got the elbow jump shot, 15-footer. It's like a free throw when nobody comes out to contest it. Costa. Johnson. Foul call on Tariski. Vance tried to wheel around him. Three-point shooting in the game, 20% by Rock Falls. Jabot has hit three three-point field goals. Book Miller has one, Meath has two. A little too much gambling out the perimeter by Waterloo Jabot defensively. Josh Meath. Vance leans in, blocking foul. I don't know on that one. That was the block charge call, and they call the block on Nagel. Let's take another look. I don't know. There's recognition. Here comes Nagel. I think that's a charge. And we'll get a lower length angle and see if we can make the call. Uh, I'll tell you what, that's a tough call. I'm, the, the official's right there. I'm 50 feet away. Vance makes the first free throw. He is the all-time leader in free throw percentage at Rock Falls as he drains them both. Three points, Jabot lead inside of five minutes, third quarter. State of Illinois Class A Championship. Nagel over Martin, missed. Ball loose on the floor, picked up by Tereski. Vance hits the deck. They play on. Looking for Thomas, couldn't get it to him. Around the book, Miller starts to drop on Acosta. 
Here's Meath for three. His third of the game. Good, clean look, and he buried it. Meath does a nice job at squaring up, getting shoulders over toes, elbow in, and he got an open opportunity and nailed it. Martin. Now Johnson a three. Knocked in the air by Tariski into the arms of Meath. Sends it ahead. It was deflected by Johnson, but Tariski caught it. Cook Miller finds Thomas. Another block by Martin. Out of bounds. A half dozen block shots by Herb Martin. And we have officials timeout with 4-0-1 to go. Third quarter of the state Class A championship game as Herb Martin does the job again on the defensive end. Thirty-three twenty-seven. Waterloo Jabot leading Rock Falls with 4 on one to go in the third quarter. Herb Martin just got his sixth block shot. Let's take a look at that block shot. He is doing a whale of a job defensively how he watches. Now down on the post he's guarding but he does a very good job with his eyes to always know where the ball is and to know where Thomas is. Get it out of here. Six blocks state record class A in the state finals. Jack Sigma and Walter Downing. Two big names. Sigma, of course, a great with the Sonics. 12 blocks in a single game. Sigma, that's the unofficial record in a 1973 quarterfinal. The jumper by Hymos is off, but Meath right there for the putback, 35 27. So Martin's halfway to the record. And there's a block by Thomas at the other end. One right back at him. Anything you can do, I can do better, he says. Skip pass all the way across. Tariski takes it in. Tip back up by Hymos. Ball loose on the floor. Foul on Hymos. And that on Dan Hymos. His second foul. Uh, let's watch the war of 1812. There comes the shot inside. Tough shot to convert. One tip, two tips, and you probably have the call right there on the back. Good call. Costa walks it up. Rebounding in the game. Jabot, which out rebounds its opponents. He's doing it here. Bourjan, the miss. Thomas clears. Inside of three minutes. Thomas wants the basketball. against Thomas. That zone, though, has done a great job bottling him up. They're looking for him. There's the pass back up top. The open look for Bookmiller is off the mark. There's Vance driving. Cut off there by Hymos and Bookmiller. He'll throw it up in the lane. Vance over the top. One, two, three bodies hit the deck. Buckmiller, Hymos, and Bourgeois. Well, here comes Brian Vance. Dribbles toward the paint. Throws up a very tough shot, and then there's your foul. I think Vance has tried to take the ball too much to the painted area tonight. He's a very good perimeter shooter, and he hasn't really looked for that three-point shot. The entry pass stolen. Martin to Vance. Inside of two minutes for the third quarter. An eight-point lead for Waterloo Jubeau. He has not taken many shots from outside, Cap. You're right. He's going to take one right there and, and drills, drills it. Told you, he's got to make a couple triples tonight if they're going to win this game. He's the best shooter on the floor. Five-point game with less than 90 seconds remaining third quarter. And now the Rock Falls fans getting to their feet. The Waterloo needs to swing the ball to the perimeter, then take the ball down toward the baseline and get Thomas posted up. He seals and keeps the guy on his backside. He's very tough to stop. One minute to go in the third. That's Buck Miller. Wheels on Johnson. 
pass off the hands of Martin and taken by Bergeron. And now Brock falls with 45 seconds to go in possession, down by five points. It was a four point Waterloo Jabot lead at halftime. Why do I get the sense we're being prepared for a dramatic finish? I think you're right. We've got a heck of a ball game going on. Rock Falls says, hey, we're going to go in trailing, but it's either going to be five, three, or two. And then we'll regroup. We have eight minutes to win a state championship. I like this move right here by Tom Seeger. Costa to Vance. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Vance puts up the three. Two seconds. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. It will be a five point deficit facing Rock Falls as we go to the fourth quarter with Jabot leading 35 to 30. A trip to Peoria and city bragging rights are on the line tomorrow afternoon as the top teams in the public league battle it out for the 1999 Chicago Public League title. Join Jim Blaney and Norm Van Leer for all the action live at 5 o'clock p.m. from the UIC Pavilion right here on Fox Sports Chicago. That man, Dennis Reeder, watching as the fourth quarter begins here in Peoria. Offensive rebounds, Jabot with a two to one advantage, second chance points, an even bigger advantage. And we start the fourth quarter with Jabot leading Rock Falls 35 30 in this Class A championship game. That matchup tomorrow in Chicago is going to be a great game, and we've got eight minutes of great basketball here with a heck of an opportunity for either club to win a state championship. John Thomas scored just two points in that third quarter. That's 10 points in the game. Meath, who's been the bulk of the offense in the second half. Take the ball down to the baseline and look inside because you've got Thomas, who has a pretty good seal on Bourgeon inside. They go all the way in, and a foul on Bourgeon. Everybody was watching Thomas, me included, and Nagel said, we don't need to go that way. I can take care of it myself. Let's go to Mitch Robinson, who is standing by with one of the heroes for one of the other final four teams here in Peoria. Thanks, Dave. And Dave, I'm with Brad Korn, and uh, you just told me it's starting to settle in the high school career over, uh, but what a wonderful tournament for you. Definitely. This has is, is been a dream come true for us. Um, you know, we never really expected we made it here, and... You know, we just we kept our focus and played hard and we ended up in fourth place. People sometimes say they got uh, concerned that the third and fourth place teams don't really get up for that game. You look like you were up for that game. Oh, definitely. I mean, it was our last game ever, us seniors. You know, you know, the only way to go is to go hard and for all these fans. And it's for ourselves, too, and for our coaches and our family and our friends. Play hard in front of them. You'll be back on this floor twice uh, twice a season for Southern, huh? Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, I think I'll save this one right now. And, can't wait to move on to next year. Great. Congratulations. What a wonderful career. Brad Korn, everybody. Back to you, Dave and Dave. Brad Korn and Plano fell in the third place game earlier tonight, 69-65 to Quincy Notre Dame. Well, that's the first bad pass in three games we've done with John Thomas that he's made a poor decision coming out of a double team. Turnovers in the game. Is that ever a low title? A total, oh, this is fourth quarter turnovers. I was going to say. That is a low total. That's for the game. Benaiah Johnson. Inside of five and a half minutes, eight points, Jabot lead. The bounce to Vance, he couldn't control it, picked it back up. And now he'll fire the three. And it's pulled down by Nagel. Nagel harassed by Martin. Nagel's been an unsung hero tonight. Seven points, five boards, and worked very, very hard. That's his sixth rebound now of the evening. Got 
a seal, we got a deuce. Yeah. Absolutely, you can see it coming. If they don't get a green shirt around to double that post, he does such a good job with a wide base and gets a seal. Watch the entry pass. He's asking for the ball. Give it to me. Give it to me. Gets a little bit of a hold. He gets away with it. There's your contact. He powers right through it. Wasn't a whole lot Bourjan could do about that. As the ball arrived, he picks up his third foul. And Thomas, two of three from the line tonight. Make it three of four. Three-point play. Jabot by 11. 4.55 to go. Fourth quarter of this Illinois Class A championship game. And Waterloo Jabot leads by 11. Four fifty-five to go, fourth quarter. Waterloo Jabot leading Rock Falls, forty-one thirty here at Carver Arena in Peoria. And here you will look at Waterloo Jabot. Well, Herb Martin's not there for the double. He relaxed. John Thomas has a seal. Now the ball came in just below free throw line extended. Technically, defensively, when it's below free throw line extended, you got to play on the low side. You got a seal on the high side. He's got him sealed. He asked for the ball. Catch, contact. No question about the three point play opportunity. Yeah, Good camera. Work. Go. Waterloo's Jabot's lead was 30 to 27. And Acosta ends a 6 0 run by Waterloo Jabot. They had outscored him 11 to 3 prior to that basket. First field goal of the night for Acosta. Nine point game. Plenty of time, four and a half minutes. Got another seal inside. Thomas wants it. Thomas has it. Not that time. Nagel called for a foul on the rebound. Dennis Reader says, where? What was the foul? Well, we're going to find out right now. Here comes the entry. Now, Thomas has another good seal. Turns into three green shirts and just doesn't get it there. I don't know about that. One. That is the fourth foul on Jeremy Nagel. You talked a few moments ago, Dave, about how important a contributor he had been in this game tonight. That's a big foul. A long way to go in this ball game. 41 32. And you got some three point shooters out there. Johnson spins, put it up with a right hand and missed. Nagel the rebound. Tell you what, that's a tough shot. Jedediah Dick Johnson is a very good perimeter shooter. As we know, he advanced nine triples this morning to get them here. But they've gotten away from that. Both their guards have tried these contested hanging shots in the paint over a very physical tall front line. Thomas takes it outside. Approaching the three-minute mark. Thomas got a seal again and another oh. Tip back in. They've gone to the man-to-man -man defense, and it's fine to play man-to-man -man if everyone knows where John Thomas is, but he's done a great job getting seals and getting opportunities. What a shot at the other end by Acosta, and he was fouled. Here's a great dribble drive. He splits between two men. There's your contact. And he scores a really nice, solid drive. Four points here in the fourth quarter for Jorge Acosta. Buck Miller called for his third foul. At the 2.59 mark. His free throw, making an eight-point game, and does. 43-35. Buck Miller. Found Thomas underneath, tipped it back up once. Did not get it to fall. Acosta the other way. Acosta all the way, puts it up with the left hand. Back to back, dribble drives to the rim by Acosta. Real nice take. Seven points in the fourth quarter for Jorge Acosta, and it's 43-37. Rock Falls coming back. And the bounce pass stolen by Acosta. Out to Vance. Bouncing it ahead, and the blocking foul called on Book Miller. Acosta seven straight points for Rock Falls, and he comes up with the steal here. 
Bad pass. He drops down to help, and there's the steal. Kick out to Vance. It's off to the races, and there's your foul. The fourth on Buck Miller. Seventh team foul. Rock falls in the bonus. As Bourgeois makes the free throw. Acosta this afternoon against Plano had 10 assists in the ball game. The semifinal win, 64 to 50. Here in the fourth quarter, he's turning it on. Bojan makes them both, and we have a four-point game. Timeout. A full timeout taken by Waterloo Jabot with 2.17 to go. Jabot's lead is down to four points over Rock Falls. Back in a moment. Waterloo Jabot leads Rock Falls 43-39 with two minutes and 17 seconds to go in regulation in this Illinois Boys Class A championship game. For the most up-to-date information on your favorite Illinois high school team or athlete, log on to the official IHSA website at www.ihsa.org. We were on there today. Brought the laptop down. Then a little surfing, get information, get ready for tonight. By the way, shooting percentages up to the moment. Rock Falls, 36.8%. Waterloo Jibo, 37.8%. Rebounding, 21 for Rock Falls with six off the offensive glass. And 35 for Waterloo with 14 offensive rebounds. And Johnson has the ball. 2.08 to go. Acosta to try to make it a two point game. That's the guy I want with the ball in his hands. Vance. Vance. On the drive. Swatted away by Thomas. John Thomas with his third block of the game. Thomas does a nice job. Rotates over. Vance trying to turn the corner, really in a tough position. And there's your shot block. Acosta fakes the shot, scoops it up, missed it. And a foul as Thomas got the rebound. Um, foul on Acosta. His second fourth team foul. And the Hawks will take it out of bounds. Pass down court and a collision. A blocking foul called. On Bourgeon. Right call. That's the right call. You've got to give the man room to come down. Now let's watch this. Here comes the pass down the court. He has no room to come down. He lands into the man. That is a blocking foul. Excellent call by a veteran crew of officials. Meath will inbound with 1.47 to go. To risky. Back to me. It's a four point Jabot lead. Cradles the ball, he's bumped and fouled by Martin. That's his second foul. The third foul made that, the sixth team foul. Hawks are. Take it out of bounds. They're already battling. Had to deny Thomas and Nagel on the inbounds play. They'll go to Bookmiller instead. Off to Tariski to the corner meet. They trap him. And they tied him up. I think that's a pretty good call. Coach Reeder doesn't like it. He has his hand on his forehead. It happened right in front of him. But let's take a look at a replay. Meath gets caught in a trap situation. And there comes your tie-up. That's a good call. You cannot hang on to the ball in a trap. You got to think, if the ball comes to me, where am I going with it? Not catch it and then wonder where to go. 
Saw the points off turnovers. We approach the final minute. Four-point game. In the State of Illinois Championship. Vance spins. Acrobatic move. But Thomas, another rebound. Kariski into the front court, grabbed by Vance. I think Vance might have gotten poked in the face on that last drive. To risky a 69% free throw shooter. To risky stepped to the line for the first time tonight. Four points earlier today in the semifinals. In and out. Martin clear. Big miss. Costa down the court, 45 seconds. No, but a foul. And Acosta at the line with 43.6 and a four-point Waterloo Javel lead. Here comes the dribble drive out of Jorge Acosta. Splits two defenders. There's the bump. Tell you what, Acosta has done a great job taking the ball hard to the paint and trying to get layups out of it. There's the free throw shooting. Acosta. Makes it a three-point game. He's hit three out of four in the second half. Three out of six in the game. Missed it. Rebound Nagel. Being harassed. Nagel trying to wrap it up. He's fouled. Great rebound. I mean, that was a rebound in traffic. So Nagel. Foul by Acosta, third foul on Acosta. Nagel, a 64% free throw shooter. In the ball game tonight, he was one for four in the first half, one for one in the second half. 40% on the night. None bigger than this. One and one, the free throw. No! Martin the rebound. Boy, opportunities being squandered. Acosta all the way in, lays it in. One point game. Rock Falls! Well, there is fear on the faces right now of some of the Waterloo Javel players. They cannot believe that they've squandered these opportunities. Here comes Acosta. Nobody really does a very good job getting back. Right now, what we saw yesterday in the second half in the Javel game, they played not to lose. They're doing the same thing right now. They're playing not to lose. They've lost their aggressiveness. We get a steal. We know we have a good shot. Let's go. Let's go. It's 44 touches together. We can do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's reset the game for you. Possession arrow to Jabot. Timeout situation. Three full and a 20 for Rock Falls. Two and two 20s for Jabot. Neither team yet in the double bonus. But they're close. 32.2 remaining. There's Thomas, 101 against Martin. Has it taken away from me? How about Costa? Knocked it to Martin. 24 seconds. Acosta with the ball. 19 seconds. Acosta lost the handle on it. Tariski has it. Traveling. Well, I don't know. There was a lot of contact there. Timeout, Rock Falls. Let's watch the last sequence. Here's the drive by Acosta. Right there, Tariski knocks it out of his hands. Well, I mean, he was grabbed he by was Acosta. Grabbed, absolutely. A ton of contact. You cannot call the travel on that play. Here goes the dribble. He fumbles it. There's your loose ball. And there's your grab. You cannot call a travel there. That is just a missed call. Officials are human, but that's a missed call at a critical time. No chance of a travel there. 14.7 seconds remaining. Turnovers in this championship game where they were fairly even. But now Rock falls with the advantage. Fourteen point seven seconds remaining. Waterloo Jabot 
led 9 to 2 early in this game led 23 19 at halftime right now it's a one point lead and rock falls with the ball well for rock falls they've got to get a shot up not the first available shot but the first the best shot that they can find they don't need a three obviously it's a one point game but you don't want to rush and take a bad look. You got a lot of time. 14.7 seconds left. You'll probably see Vance on dribble penetration. Jedediah Johnson will probably try and spot up. But the guy I look for is Herb Martin, who can sail to the glass Absolutely. and get an offensive stick back or a possible layup inside. Costa to send it in to Vance. Here he comes on dribble penetration. Ten seconds to go in this championship game. Seven seconds. I don't know what he's waiting on. Five seconds. Four events. Puts it up. Yeah! It's seven tenths of a second. Vance with time out taken by Waterloo Jabot. The game is not over. Well, I said, what's he waiting on? He's waiting to drain a big-time triple, the biggest shot of his life. His second three-point field goal of the game with seven-tenths of a second. Let's take a look. Well, he waited and waited. He gave his team really no chance at an offensive rebound, but there's a clean look, and he buries it. That's his second three-point goal of the second half. And I told you at halftime, he's got to have two threes for them to win. There's number two. Boom! What a great look right there. First lead of the game for Rock Falls. Three-point shooting. Rock Falls with only three, and Vance has two of them. Jabot, five of 11. Now, this game is not over. No, it's a two-point game. This game is far from over. With seven tenths, you have enough time because you have to remember there's more than seven tenths left. The clock says seven tenths, but the ball has to come in. The timer has to recognize in his brain that the ball has now been touched and then hit the button. That gives you well over a second to catch the ball, square your shoulders, and let it fly. There you see the possession arrow to Jupo, the timeout situation, and the fouls. And now Rock Falls will take a timeout. As Tom Sigel will talk things over with his crew. What a dramatic shot by Brian Vance. Seven tenths of a second to go. We'll be back. Those young ladies look a little happier than they did about five minutes ago. Well, they've got to wait. They got the number one finger. There's still seven tenths left, and you got shooters on the floor. I'm telling you, Book Miller to Risky, me. These guys can make shots. Freer dick out there. The only thing they don't have is John Elway at the other end to make the long pass. Freer dick to throw it in. The baseball pass stolen by Bergeron. Rock Falls wins the championship. Tom Sigel looks stunned. Well, John Thomas fell down immediately in desperation in the center circle, and the Rock Falls players in their jubilation piled on top of him. He's on the bottom of that pile, face down. He dedicated this entire season to his late mom, and they fall just, just two now points short. He gets to his knees. Congratulations to Rock Falls. They could have folded the tent down, I believe, 11 or 12 late in this ball game, and they came back. Jorge Acosta, seven straight points to bring him back, and Brian Vance, the All-Stater, a triple for a championship. Let's go to Mitch Robinson. Thanks a lot, Dave. Coach, my gosh, what a finish for you guys. Well, I'll tell you, we've talked about this weekend trying to be focused but trying to enjoy it. And I'll tell you what, now it's time to enjoy it. That was great. Our kids showed a lot of heart when a lot of people wrote them off, I think, with three or four minutes to go. We had to go half court. 
try to play him up there. We were kind of waiting to be able to get some pressure on him, save their legs, and uh, we're able to maybe hurry him a little bit. I thought they got tentative, and then a guy like Brian steps up and hits a huge shot. I know Jed had some big steals, and I mean, that's what it's all about, that these guys deserve a ton of credit. The guy was trying to, uh, Brian was trying to drive all night, and then it turns out he takes that deep step and hits that three for you. Right, and I think that, that we've gotten around him a lot, and, and he had to back off and maybe surprise him a little bit, but I'll tell you, that's the way he's been. Just as competitor, step up and hit the big shot. Do you know how popular a guy you are now? Rock yeah. Falls first state title in any sport? Well, that's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm happy to be popular for a day or two. Congratulations, Coach. What a win. Good for you. Dave, Dave, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Mitch. So Rock Falls wins the championship 45-43 over Waterloo. Jabot will be back with more from Carver Arena in Peoria in just one moment. They have dimmed the lights here in Carver Arena for the presentations as Rock Falls captures the Class A championship 45-43 over Jabot and our Pepsi play of the game. Not too much suspense here. I wonder which one. I think we can figure it out. Brian Vance with time winding down. Let's take a look. This is what you dream of as a child. I want to hit the game-winning shot to win the state title. There it is. Twine. He will remember that. Fans that were here and watching will remember that shot forever. State championship on the line, and he drills a three. Our Pepsi play of the game, and let's go to the man who hit that shot standing by with Mitch Robinson. All right, thanks, Dave. We're here with Brian Vance. Brian, all night you're driving inside, then you hit that last three-pointer. Did you know it when it left your hand? Uh, actually, to tell you the truth, I thought I was kind of a little short. But, you know, you know, that's one of the you know, shots that people you know, dream about. And lucky for me, I made it. First team to win a state title for Rock Falls. Not bad, huh? Uh, not bad. I think we can put the 58 team to bed now. All right. Thanks a lot, Brian. Herb, even though the lights are off, six blocks, incredible defensive effort for you. Yeah, yeah we, we had to get out on, on John Thomas. He's been scoring a lot in this tournament, and we, we just had to, had to contain him and then make sure we won the game. Congratulations, Herb. You're a state winner. Thank you very much. All right. Back to you, Dave. All right, Mitch, thank you. Herb Martin with six of their seven block shots, and right now the award ceremony getting underway. Brent, Roman. First, Waterloo Jabot. Everybody Number associated 12, with the Nick basketball Mercer. team receiving their medals. Number 14, you know, Ryan I don't think, Nordyke. And obviously he's probably in shock right now, Brian Vance. Number 24, but How Pat fortunate Lane. he is. How many millions of kids go out and shoot in their 32, driveway every Chad day, Frederick. and they fantasize. Game on the line, state championship. 40, Dave Holder. Boom, take the shot. He is living a dream. People, millions of people 50, watching this are living vicariously through him. It's not just a basket with 40 seconds Number to go 10, to win a championship or a pass that you made. He had the entire weight of a state title 30, riding on his shoulders, Josh, and he held Dave. the ball. I remember saying to you as the clock wound down, he's waiting too long. 22, now, John I'm fine. Trisky. I'm not waiting too long. Pulls up and nails a three-point shot Jeremy to Nagel. win a state title. It Unbelievable. Was, it was all or nothing. The clock got down to about five seconds. And 44, when he John Thomas. Made his way to the top of the key and threw up the shot seven-tenths of a second. And here's John Chippo. Thomas. Second place, and 1999. Here's a guy who's just played his heart out. Absolutely. Final statistics in this championship game. Rock Falls shot 37%, Jabot 38%, three-point shooting 30% by Rock Falls. They only hit three three-point shots all night, but boy, when they needed one, they got it. Jabot four of nine free throws, 10 of 16 for Rock Falls. Jabot five of 11 from the line, 46%. Rebounding the edge there to Jabot including 14 offensive rebounds, 10 assists to six for Rock Falls and blocks. And right now there's Tom Sigel, head coach of Rock Falls, That's receiving his medal. Triumphantly holds up the index Thank finger. You. And now the rest of the Rock Falls Assistant contingent, and they're gonna have a happy trip back up to the northwest corner of the state. What was another interesting thing that Brian Vance said? 
most kids are not perceptive about what happened in 1958. They hear it, and it goes in one ear and out the other. But he talked in his post-game comments, we can now put the 58 team that finished second to Marshall to bed. We are state champs. You'll never take Number that away four, from us, ever. Matt Sartwell. Brian Vance, who hit the game-winning shot, just got Number 11, his Jorge medal. Acosta. And they've talked, these Rock Falls players have, about their loss last year to Number Farmington 14, in the Super Dustin Sectional Weaver. as having spurred them on and this time in the rematch at East Moline Scott in Payne. the Super Sectional. They beat the Farmers to get to Peoria. Number 23, and they took Jetta it Dyer all the Johnson. way. There's Scott Hayen, senior. There's Jedediah Johnson. Number 24, Kelly Westcott. One of the co-captains of this team. Number Kelly 32, Westcott. Matt Some guys Martin. we didn't see play tonight, but they all played roles in forging this championship. Number 33, Brian Borjan. Brian Borjan, who made a great play on that last inbounds pass. Absolutely. Number 34, just a sophomore. Andrew Acosta, Kimball. just a sophomore. So while they lose three senior starters in Vance, Johnson, and Martin, Martin. They've got the building blocks to be a very good team for the next two seasons. They got a great guard and a stud inside. And I know there are people watching on other teams that were more highly ranked, that were other people's choices to get here, but the bottom line is Rock Falls is the one that's still standing. It doesn't matter how many you win during the season. They wipe out the slate when the state tournament starts. Everybody, that's what I love about March Madness in Illinois. Everyone has a chance. You can be winless, you get a chance. Rock Falls completes a 31 and three campaign. And now the championship trophy draped with the nets. First the second place trophy. Going to Waterloo, Jabot. There's Coach Reeder, along with John Thomas, John Tariski, and Jeremy Nagel. So the 1999 Boys Class A Basketball State Champion has been crowned. America's original March Madness continues next weekend with the Boys Class AA Tournament. Coverage begins Friday at 12 noon. We hope you enjoyed our coverage this weekend. Fox Sports Chicago is your official home for all IHSA state championships. For David Kaplan, Yvonne Simmons, and Mitch Robinson, and the rest of our crew, Dave Ennett saying so long from Carver Arena in Peoria. Fox Sports News is coming up next. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Fox Sports Chicago.